The columns are severed, it collapses in the center, and starts coming down just as the imploders intended it to do. A massive pile of debris, and in just a few seconds it was done. They said it would be about eight seconds for the whole thing to happen to, because the cloud of dust became so huge and came to us so quickly we couldn't be sure exactly when the uh, end of it had taken place, but it was a tremendous sight and sound. And now there's a pile of debris, a huge pile there that will be there for some time. The demolition crews now have a tremendous job. Now we're going to take a look at uh, what happened over at the uh, toggle switch itself on Center Square, where Steve Cookson was standing by to hit that switch. Now, are we looking now at uh, right after it happened? And Carl Mason from Central Salvage celebrating. <laughs> the high fives there, I think. That was the scene at Center Square. After the toggle switch was hit by Steve Puchin, who said he thought he would win that raffle and win the ticket to, pu to push the button, and so he did. He hit it, and a big celebration broke out there with the demolition crew seeing that their job had worked as planned. Now we're going we're gonna to show you the view from our Destructo cam. The Destructo cam survived, and we have pictures from the camera, and we'll take a look at that now, what it looked like from Destructo cam, which is right down on 7th Street. This is a real-time picture, not in slow motion. The camera right down across the street from the building as the blasts went off inside. Now looking at the replay from our camera right down on the street. There we go. Wow. Unbelievable. And the camera survived the blast. It became enveloped in the cloud of dust and debris. Some of the debris sticking to the lens apparently but the camera made it through dramatic pictures of what it looked like when all those blasts went off of course not one single blast but a number of dynamite charges timed in such a way as to bring the building down in the center of the building and then uh, once those columns were severed the whole thing just came down in a big pile and a tremendous dust ball and now that's all pretty much cleared out on this beautiful Saturday morning. Now we're going to take a look at a slow motion picture of what it looked like. The Destructo camera slow motion picture. Let's go back to that tape now and see what this looked like in slow motion. We, can't, we call it Destructo cam and here it is, slow motion. You see charges going off inside. The debris is starting to fly out toward the camera and all around. The center columns of the building are severed. It starts to fall, and of course there is debris all over the place. Although, just as planned, it's contained to an area pretty closely around the building, and it, as opposed to an explosion which throws things far and wide, an implosion keeps it right there in the building area. And that is what the plan was, in fact, to keep the, the debris to within about 150 feet around the edges of the building. We're going to take a brief break now. While Channel 69 was covering the implosion live on television, a crowd had gathered at 7th and Turner to watch the event in person. It had all the elements of a Sunday afternoon football game. Pretzels and sweatshirts, binoculars and boosters, parking problems and seating squabbles. Young and old, they came from near and far. I'm from Mississippi. We were up last night about 2 o'clock, and we figured, you want to go to the corporate plaza? So we said, yeah. They came with cameras and recorders for one last look for lots of reasons. I love destruction. <laughs> because this is my first time seeing a building fall down. <laughs> this is my first time. And they were not disappointed. As countdown time approached, the crowd grew still. It was cool. 
Yeah, what'd you like about it? It blowing up. Hey. With all with the roof falling down. Yeah, it wasn't nothing exciting at all. I was overseas, I was on a battleship New Jersey, right here's a ship. I see a lot more action and one minute than everybody's seen here in the last couple hours. Oh well, you can't please all the people. We're taking a look at a shot from live uh, atop the PPNL building, looking down at what was the corporate plaza building, the big hole now in the center of it. The implosion went as planned just a few minutes after 9 o'clock, leaving a tremendous pile of junk basically there. In fact, Mayor Height is uh, on top of the parking garage where we are now, and it's just uh, said jokingly to Steve Puction, who pushed the button, that you sure made a mess of our city. And they all had a good laugh over that. And of course, uh, the implosion has leveled the building as planned. It was the deemed the best way to bring the building down. The wrecking ball wouldn't do it. They've done it this morning, and it looks like it's very successful. Okay, we're going to uh, move the camera just a bit here, and you can see the parking deck where we are now. As we move, zoom in, you see the, the crowd that's right here. You see me waving here on the edge of the deck. Just behind me this way is a news conference. The news conference is going on right over here with Mayor Height and with uh, Steve Puction, who pushed the button. Apparently things have gone well. From our vantage point, unfortunately, we're not able to hear exactly what they're saying about uh, whether there have been any difficulties or whether things went very smoothly. Uh, I believe Newland had told us a few minutes ago that uh, as far as she could tell, there were no difficulties over there at the square. And uh, I think we can go back to Newland now and uh, see if you learned anything more about how things went. Newland? Well, Rob, here from the scene, as you can see, things are just a mass of twisted steel and bricks, and there's city officials standing around, and I talked to the mayor just a short time ago. He said everything went according to plan. Very excited. This is a tremendous moment and a tremendous victory for both the company and the city. Of course, this was a first for them. They were... Uh, imploding a building over a sinkhole which uh, Central Salvage Company had never done before. A very unique situation and it came off without a hitch. They are very pleased today so things are, have gone extremely well. Right now we're showing you a wide shot as you can see what uh, the other buildings in the area look like. None of them were damaged in this and when we saw the first implosion go off there were just shards of glass and bricks shooting out in all directions. I thought honestly that some of the buildings would be hurt by that but apparently uh, they are not. There seems to be no structural damage to anything down here on 7th and Hamilton. Also we want to show you uh, where the uh, spark and the implosion actually happened. It happened right here. Uh, there was a set of wires that actually just got disconnected. They were linked down across the street and they went all the way down Hamilton or 7th Street to the building. They were hooked up to seven uh, stacks of uh, copper explosives that were set off and that brought the building down. Uh, all, otherwise, things um, around here are pretty clear and pretty quiet and nobody's been allowed back in this area police are still cordoning it off and not allowing spectators back in there's a lot of uh, insulation around the street and there's still some dust that's blowing through here uh, we're going to show you what the street looks like right now if you can take a look over down Hamilton Street you can see that there's a lot of insulation that made its way down this far and just came sailing through as we mentioned still some dust in the air the wind is carrying things across some of the lighter stuff from the building but things have settled down quite a bit and it seems like it was a very successful implosion and a real victory for the city of Allentown and that is the scene here at 7th and Hamilton and Rob we understand the mayor